Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology. And today we are going to discuss the secrets of the Ascendant, the Lagna. Ah, uh, no, not the Ascendant, not the Lagna. We are going to discuss about the secrets of the Lord of the Ascendant, the Lagna Lord. He's a very important planet. In fact, the Lagna Lord is, in my opinion, the most important planet, or at least at par with Sun and Moon. But why is he so important? Just because he is ruler of the Ascendant? Is it all? That's all? End of the story. He protects the body, he protects the existence of the body. That, that's all? There's no other reason? No. In fact, he is more important than the Lagna. All right, so today we will discuss in short, hopefully, regarding the Ascendant Lord. And as usual, if you are new to the channel, please subscribe to it. And if you want a consultation from me regarding your Lagna Lord or any other planet or anything else in your life, you can go down to the description section of my videos to find the link to my website for booking a reading. And yes, God is there with you all the time. Just look to Him and you will find Him. So what is Lagna Lord? Lagna Lord is the ruler of the Ascendant. So suppose your Lagna is Taurus. Then Venus is the Lord of your Ascendant. If it is Aquarius, then it is Saturn. So what does it mean when you say that a planet rules a particular house? Because Lagna Lord is ultimately a ruler, nothing else. <laughs> no, actually he's much more than that. So ruling uh, the a ruler of a house has the responsibility to ensure that that house functions properly. Now, I'm very careful with my words. I didn't say his responsibility is to do good. I said his responsibility, good or bad, is to ensure that the house which he is ruling functions properly. Which means if it is a Dustana house, the lords of the Dustanas, their duty is to function that they give us suffering. Because the, it will try to protect the Dustana house. When I say protect, I don't mean to say that uh, when the planet is sitting in a Dustana house. Or when the lords of Dustanas are sitting in Dustanas. I don't mean to say that. I said, wherever the lords of Dustanas are sitting, they will always try to take the agenda of the Dustana houses there. So similarly, wherever the Lord of the Ascendant is sitting, he will try to take the agenda of the Ascendant there. Now, what's the meaning of the word agenda? Agenda means purpose. What, what does the Ascendant want to achieve in this life? Any Ascendant. What, what does that Ascendant finally get solace in? All right, so therefore, the ascendant lord is a very important one because that defines the entire existence. What we forget is <clears throat> the lagna defines the physical existence, which means, for example, fifth house from your ascendant defines your children, son, daughter, love life, creativity, intelligence, so and so. But it necessarily does not define things that we like. <laughs> yes, that's a very important and a very interesting thing. Therefore, the things that we like have to be seen from the fifth house. Not from the Lagna, from the Lagna Lord. Because Lagna Lord is the place where we are going so imagine we are going this side and then the fifth uh, fifth house gives us happiness from any house all right so then if we are going this side then maybe fifth house from here gives us happiness so the ninth house from the lagna lord gives us knowledge that's very interesting <laughs> Or other than saying gives us knowledge, I would say we have a tendency to take knowledge from that house. Wherever the ninth house from the Lagna Lord is, that is a very important house. Because that house will define 
how how do we view gurus and spirituality divinity wisdom how do we view them or how do we view anything which comes from the top anything which descends that's what is the ninth of the knowledge of the parampara descends that is why the entire guru shishya parampara is in the ninth house either it's spiritual knowledge or education or astrology or singing dancing whatever it is all the knowledge of the world is in the ninth house but the ninth from the ascendant lord will tell you how do you view the ninth house in your lagna chart from your lagna the ninth house how do you view that ninth house because now you are sitting in a different place because see the houses from lagna will never change so irrespective of your lagna or horoscope the seventh house will always remain the uh, house for spouse whichever your lagna is whichever your lagna lord is but the placement of the lagna lord will decide do you like the seventh house do you like the fifth house do you like the ninth house or do you hate the ninth house <laughs> all right so that's a very interesting placement so for example suppose somebody's lagna lord is in the ninth house so that means now the ninth house can function like the ascendant like the ascendant means the ninth house does not uh, take care of the body or the physical existence but because <clears throat> the lagna lord is sitting there that house becomes much more important than the ascendant because it's like saying <clears throat> i am somebody i am nobody i am anybody maybe whoever i am but i am interested in something or somebody then for me that person or that thing or that place becomes even more important then me then where i am what i am doing because i am interested in something else or somebody <clears throat> so therefore the placement of the lagna lord will tell us what are the things that we may like and we do not therefore whenever you are giving a consultation to somebody astrological or any psychological or any kind of consultation before you suggest fancy lofty very attractive things you know oh i think you should be doing this in life i think you should be doing that in life as a matter of career or anything else in any area of your life please take a note of where the lagna lord is placed and please make a note of the houses which are in trines from the lagna lord should i repeat trines from the lagna lord so suppose somebody's lagna lord is in the sixth then the second and the tenth are always in trines from the lagna lord that means that person will always always and always depending on the other combinations of course that person will always like to earn money save money or go ahead in their career yes lagna lord in the seventh they will always be obsessed about others oh my god third house superficial connections 11th house big network circle seventh house spouse what is going on in his life what is going on in her life what what is he doing what is she doing not as a matter of gossip but it could turn to that also but it could also be that they are very much interested in others or they want to know what is going on in, in the lives of others all right so the placement of the ascended lord will tell us what things you like and what you don't now imagine if the uh, lagna lord is placed somewhere in the seventh house imagine then you also have to check which are the houses which are the dusthana houses from the lagna lord all right that is something very interesting so that means the 6th 8th and the 12th from the 
Lagna Lord. Wherever the Lagna Lord is placed, these houses are very important. Now, imagine the predicament. Suppose somebody's Lagnesh is in 12th house. So, which is the 12th from the 12th? It is the 11th house. Now, 11th house gets activated in Dasha. And you make lots of profits, money, career, name, fame, status, whatever it is, children or marriage. 11th house supports everything in life. But the Lagna Lord is not very happy with that. What kind of a situation is this? It's a very tricky situation. Lagnesh in 12th is the is the most uh, it's a it's a very polar placement in my opinion. Not that it's a bad placement. It can be very good or bad depending on the chart and the planner, of course. But what my agenda in this video is, is not to tell you what is good, what is bad. It's to tell you that you should start looking at the horoscope from different angles. Just, oh, fifth house has uh, this planet. He will do this. She will do that. No, it, it doesn't work like that. I've always seen that fifth house from the lagna lord if there's a planet like moon and the person uh, can have a tendency to sing but now suppose fifth house from the lagna he has a planet like venus then he may be interested uh, more in things like painting or drawing now what does it mean he's interested in painting and he's also interested in singing which one will he end up doing oh, it's a very difficult question well, the Dasha will finally decide what he will end up doing. So imagine his moon Mahadasha gets active, which is placed in the fifth house from the Lagna Lord. All right, not from the Lagna, from the Lagna Lord. And Venus is in fifth from the Lagna, fifth from the ascendant, fifth house. And if Dasha of moon is activated, then what will happen? Then whatever he does, if he starts singing, he will do it with a lot of passion and pleasure and heart and so his entire focus will be there because now this planet is sitting in fifth from his lagna lord which means literally from him lagna is not we actually lagna is uh, lagna lord is we because we, we are all, always doing something either we are ruining somebody else's life we are improving someone else's life we are improving our life or we are damaging ourselves something or the other we are always doing and when i say doing i don't mean career or profession anything even if you are sitting in home doing nothing watching tv you are still doing something you are ruining yourself <laughs> all right so people say that oh i am not doing anything but all the 24 hours you are doing something all right so either your actions are doing good to you and others or they are ruining yourself and others. All right. So, therefore, whenever you suggest somebody anything in matters of career or relationships, then you must check the placement of the Lagna Lord. He is very, very, very important. And many times I have seen there are problems from the Lagna, which means, suppose, the ninth house has malefics, especially planets like Saturn, Rahu, Ketu, Sun, Mars, still fine. But if these three malefics are there, generally I have seen that it takes a bit longer to convince them, the people, to do some spiritual practices. Because one of the most important traits of malefics is they give you doubt. Rahu gives you doubt. Aisa hota hai kya? Nahi nahi, aisa nahi. <laughs> Saturn, Saturn gives you uh, a sense of denial. Ah, nahi hai, galat bol hai, jhoot bol hai, kus nahi aata hai isko. That's Saturn. You know? So especially if Saturn and Rahu are linked and Ketu can give you confusion. Oh my God, I heard this here, this guru said this, this guru said that, what's going on? Ah, leave. Nobody knows anything. So it takes bit longer to convince them that do some uh, spiritual practices do some mantras and elevate your consciousness not that they are uh, bad people or uh, they can never become spiritual but it takes a bit long for us to convince these people but now suppose the ninth house from his lagna lord 
is having a great benefit like Jupiter or Moon especially. Then what can happen is, you will see these people I have seen, they are very much inquisitive to learn about God, to learn about spirituality. What is soul? What is, you know, who is God? What is the process? How should I reach him? They are very much inquisitive. But because of that malefic in ninth from the Lagna, what is happening is that they have had some, you know, crazy experiences. They have gone to some gurus and some gurus have not been able to answer their questions properly. And then they, have con they are confused. So the difficulties from the Lagna can be very easily eradicated if the placements from the Lagna Lord are good. Because placements from the Lagna Lord will tell you how much eager are you. And the reverse is also true. If there is a malefic in the ninth from the Lagna Lord, and on the other side, there is a benefit in the ninth house from Lagna. Then even if the person meets great gurus and you know great spiritual leaders, but somehow the person willingly also cannot act because from the Lagna Lord, there's this malefic. So it's like externally the guru is great, but uh, the he, he is not able to have a connection with the guru. All right, so that is why whenever you give marriage counseling or marriage consulting, always, always, always check the planet that is in the seventh from the Lagna, no, Lagna Lord. <laughs> because any planet in the seventh from the Lagna Lord, from the Lagna Lord, will aspect the Lagna Lord. All right. That is a very important planet. Therefore, I have seen, you know, for example, people who have great planets in seventh house, natural benefics. And then they have some terrible malefic in the seventh from their ascendant lord. Then what happens, even if the marriage, married life is good, the partner is good externally. But they just keep wondering, why in the universe am I wasting time with this person? <laughs> And if the opposite is there, the other, the converse is also true. Sometimes the marriage is not great. The other person is not very good. If the seventh house is not that great. But if the seventh from the Lagna Lord is great, then you are happy. Because you, you because seventh from the Lagna Lord will tell you what is your motivation towards married life. Why do you think you should get married. Well, what is that which is there in marriage which you want? So if there are benefits, it means you want to give. And if there are malefics, you want to take. So whenever, wherever there is giving, there is pleasure. Whenever there is taking, there is problem. Because everybody wants to take. So marriages can only sustain if uh, we want to give. Alright, so that is why the Lord of the Ascendant is a very important planet. In fact, he is even more important than Sun and Moon because he decides everything actually. Right? And we will discuss more on the Lagna Lord later, some other time. And I had also started the series on uh, Ascendance and uh, I stopped at Gemini and maybe by next week I will start with Planets for Gemini Ascendance and henceforth cancer and leo and all others and i can understand the situation of the pisces lagna because all, every time any time we start any series on astrology it starts with aries and it ends with pisces so many pisces lagna people have messaged me to uh, bring pisces in the front but let's not do that let's follow the order let's have some patience all right and by that Pisces will also bless us. Okay. So thank you very much for your patient hearing. And if you want a consultation from me, you can always go to my website down in the description section. And God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you must find him. Find him from the ninth house and also from the ninth from the ascendant Lord. All right. Either of the two houses, you will surely find him. Thank you very much.